In this video, we'll look at another iterated integral over a region, uh, but in this case, we'll see that it's not rectangular. And the way to detect immediately that it's not rectangular is one of the limits of integration, in this case, uh, one of the inner limits of integration is variable. It depends on either x or y. In this case, it's a function of x. The thing that I'm integrating is x squared, and if you look, I'm doing the outer integral is x, and I'm therefore ranging x between 0 and 1. And then my inner integral is with respect to y, so I'm ranging y between 0 and x. And let's try to graphically understand what that region of integration is looking like. So I'll draw x and y. And first, let me draw those constant limits of integration for x. x goes from 0 to 1, so it goes from 0 to 1 here. And now I'm going to draw the corresponding values of y that we see, y equal to 0, y equal to x. So y equal to 0 is the horizontal x-axis, and y equal to x is that diagonal line. And what we're saying is that my x and y coordinates should be constrained by these four lines that I'm drawn, and graphically that means my point should live inside that triangular region that I've shaded. So to calculate that, I first do the inner integral, and I think of uh, x is a constant and y is the variable and I integrate x squared with respect to y so it'll give me a linear expression in y x squared y that needs to be evaluated from 0 to x and those are values of y that are going to go in so when I plug that in I'm first going to plug in x for y and when I do that x squared times x gives me x cubed and then I plug in 0 for y and that gives me 0 and now we just simplify that, that's x cubed. We evaluate that integral, x to the fourth over four, and evaluate that from one to zero, and we get an answer of one fourth minus zero, or just one fourth. So the integral of this function turns out to be x squared. Now you may decide to do this in the opposite order of integration. In other words, calculate the same double integral, but in the opposite order order where x is integrated first and y is integrated second. This was an arbitrary choice that we made up here to do y first and then x. Doing so requires us to change the limits of integration though and we have to adjust accordingly. Because I have y outside, my limits for integration for y must ultimately be constants and I need to look at the values of y that my region ranges through. In this case they range from y equal to zero to y equal to 1. And so I can fill in the limits of integration for y. I now look at a generic value of y and I fix that. And I'm going to think about moving through this region from left to right and what the corresponding values of x are in that region. It enters at this point here and exits at that point there. The place where it enters is where my y value and my x value agree and it exits where my x value is always equal to 1. This tells me that my x should start where my y value is equal to my x value, and my x value should end where my x value is equal to 1. And so we get this inequality here that describes the points in this region. My y limits of integration, or I'm sorry, my x limits of integration should vary from x equal to y to x equal to 1. We now have another integral that we can calculate. We know the answer. It should agree with one fourth if we've done everything correctly. So I integrate x squared with respect to x first, and that gives me x cubed over 3. I evaluate that from x equal to, or I'm sorry, x equal to 1 to y equal to, or x equal to y. So when I see a 1, I plug that in for x, and when I see the y, I plug that in for x, and so we get y cubed over 3, and I integrate that expression, it becomes y third with respect to y, so it's linear now, and it was degree 3 here, so it becomes degree 4, and I evaluate that from 1 to 0, and when you plug in those two numbers, it will be 0 at 0, so I'm just looking at 1 third minus 1 twelfth, and if you simplify that, that will be 3 twelfths or 1 fourth, and indeed, it agrees with the above calculation. 